I will be honest with you. Um, when we read the gospel and when we read all the texts describing the crucifixion, um, the process of natural death, if I can say, mm -hmm. of, from a crucifixion is honestly very well described. Oh, really? So, yes, really. I already studied two bodies of women which were crucified mm -hmm. uh, from the island of Delos uh, also. And um, so I, I know the process. Okay. okay. And I've got also uh, more than 10 years of forensic practice on contemporary cases. Mm -hmm. So I really know it. When you, when you look at the description, what the cause of death of a true crucifixion, mm -hmm. vertical crucifixion? Yes. It's dehydration. It's, it's uh, what, what is that word? Dehydration. 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 De yes. Dehydration. It's um, um, the, the blood that uh, precipitates inside the blood vessels also uh, at the level of the veins, but also at the level of the lungs. Mm -hmm. And it's also one last thing, which is tiredness of respiration. It's at the end of this position, it's really difficult, difficult so when to you're, breathe. when you're like this, you can't breathe, so you exactly. sort of suffocate. This or this. Or this. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's after hours, it's really, really hard to, to breathe. Okay. So when we read, he did not die in 20 minutes or one hour. He died after hours yeah. of such a, such a process. So honestly, when we read the text, we don't need any other explanation for his death. Toxics, venom. But he did die everything. early though, right? According, okay. to the, according to the text, he died far earlier than everyone else. Yes, but remember that during the, all the patient, he, when he was walking inside the streets of Jerusalem, he did not have a lot of water. He did not drink a lot. He was suffering. He was uh, losing some blood also. So, sorry, but he has enough reasons of dying without imagining something else. Mm. From a pure forensic point of view. Sure. In forensic, we always prefer the simplest way of dying. And very often, <laughs> this simplest way is the correct and the true one. Right. That makes a lot of sense. It's just the when you're when you're relying on the 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 biblical canon for to describe the things that were going on back then and ignoring all of the vast amounts of classical literature that surround the Bible. Mm -hmm. It's like, are you getting the truth? Because, you know, it's, it's a, it almost goes against it to like, it's like, it's, you're not looking for the truth when you're only looking at the religious texts and not trying to corroborate the, the religious texts and the meanings of the words with all of the other literature, right? This is the problem, if it's a problem. Uh, is these are religious texts. These are not historical chronicles right. or um, strong archives made by lawyers, etc. So it's, sure. this is one problem, if it's a problem. Mm -hmm. But I want to tell you, if you want to know the truth, mm -hmm. give, give me the sponge. Find me the, the relic of the sponge. Right. Find me some fragments of uh, blood, or I don't know, from the from the, from the body of the of the Christ. Then we will see. Maybe mm -hmm. the Holy Shroud or something else. Maybe mm. if we've got some traces of the of the of the body, maybe we can find uh, some answers on it. Mm -hmm. I can't say give me the skeleton of the Christ because normally right. there is no. <laughs> but. Right. Um, well, who knows? Who knows? This is honestly, this is one of the most uh, important reason of the story, the study of uh, of relics. When you study relics, first of all, you can say relics. relics. Mm -hmm. You can say if the relics are the true ones or not. Sometimes they are not true. Um, that's a problem. Yeah, that's a problem. Same, same thing with uh, with texts, te same. text fragments. Exactly. Yes, some are apocryphic. So. Um, written many years after or changed uh, a lot, etc. But if the relics are the true one, then we can work on them and maybe we can have some strong and uh, good information. Mm. Yeah, and, and like the, the idea of using, using uh, biological things like, like humans or animals to, to process new drugs is not, that, that's not exclusive 
to any certain part of the world. I believe you wrote a whole book on on the the voodoo religions of Haiti, right? Mm -hmm. And using these these this pufferfish venom tetrodotoxina TTX tetrodotoxina. Yes, yes, and and uh, toads and venoms from pufferfish, and these people would like bury themselves up to their necks and believe they were zombies. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been working on this for years. Mm -hmm. um, I made an exhibition in Paris uh, mm -hmm. about this. Uh, this is absolutely true. Mm -hmm. This is absolutely true. You put some uh, po zombie powder uh, inside uh, your shoes, inside your shirt, etc. Yeah. And uh, but I can put uh, something like all of this of powder on your skin. Nothing will happen because the. the tetrodotoxin powder does not come through the skin. So you have to put something that you scratch your skin and the, the poison goes inside the, the scratch and goes inside your, your body. Then between four or six hours later, you are considered as uh, a living dead, if I can say, mm -hmm. meaning that you really look like a dead one but your heart is still beating. You are still breathing, but very slowly. Your temperature is really down, okay? So you look like dead, but you are still living, mm. okay? Then you are put into a grave the same day. And during the night, you are extracted from your coffin by the priest, which is called a bokor. Mm -hmm. And this one takes you out and gives you the antidote. Then, you are transformed into a zombie during days, months, years, working in uh, rice uh, production in uh, any way, uh, but far away from civilization. And you will be uh, giving uh, some, I don't know, uh, barbituric or benzodiazepine, any mm. uh, drug. And also you will be giving um, alimentation without any salt. So something like uh, brain edema will develop and you will be really like a zombie. So uh, a body without any spirit, a body without any consciousness. Mm. Okay. And it will lack for years before one day uh, your bokor, the priest, will be dead because of, uh, uh, I don't know, a ac traffic accident or maybe uh, uh, a traumatic a, event. A earthquake earthquake mm -hmm. or ouragan, yeah. uh, tornado. And uh, so you will not have your each day drug, psychiatric, psych uh, barbituric or benzodiazepine, or you will be ab able to eat something and you will eat what you will find and there will be some salt in. So the edema will go down slowly and you will take back some part of your consciousness and this will be the end of the zombie uh, state and you will recover a human state day after day this is true and this is still happening in uh, in IT, but it's not for anyone it's not for you it's not for me it's for people which are it's for people that believe right you have to believe in zombies you have to believe yes you have to be initiated to voodoo initially but also it's for people that do something bad to society this is made by a secret society which is called bizango and uh, it's made for people doing something bad um, people that uh, are selling uh, territories or plantations that uh, they do not uh, really have mm -hmm. or people which are raping girls mm -hmm. okay so it's a kind of uh, parallel justice, justice, you see? Justice, yeah. Justice, it's a parallel justice. Mm. Yeah, no, it's it's really interesting, like, would would these, these rituals and like burying somebody up to their neck while they're staring at the stars all night uh, under the intoxication of these venoms have the same effect on an individual who didn't ha entertain the belief system? Right, like how much does the psychology and the the symbolism of the whole ritual play into it? The psychology is really essential, and this is really a key point. And you're absolutely right because you have to believe and you are prepared to this. Before getting intoxicated, you have a judgment in seven steps. So seven times you are 
taken at your office, you are put in a, in a car, and then uh, you are obliged to be facing the Bizongo secret society, and you are kneeling just in front of them, and they are judging you. And seven times you have the possibility of saying, I'm uh, absolutely innocent, or no, I'm really guilty. Again, there are also some signs that are uh, placed uh, just in front of your house. For example, uh, chicken uh, legs, okay, or mm. some uh, uh, um, um, voodoo doll also, that is, which is uh, made with f fragments of your right. hairs, etc. Right. So, and inside the zombie powder, you've got also other fragments. You've got. Um, human bones uh, fragments. You've got also a scratching from the grave of previous zombies. Hmm. Like if you were transferring death or zombie state using this, this powder. Okay, so it's really a mix. And as you said, and it's really true, uh, you have to believe. Hmm. And this is why also only people which are voodoo practitioners in IT may be converted into zombies. Mm. If you are not a voodoo practitioner, if you're not a voodoo uh, practitioner, yes, I don't have any other world, yes, then, right. you can, <laughs> then you cannot do, uh, you cannot be turned into a zombie. Right. 